on Wednesdays, we typically have a service of Holy Eucharist here at St. Mark's. And that is not possible at the moment because of uh, precautions around the pandemic that is taking place in our world. And so I thought we would instead offer morning prayer, which is something that we don't have to worry about bread and wine for. It's very difficult to get that to go through the wires. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O come, let us worship. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down, and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Oh, come, let us worship. We continue with a portion of the 147th Psalm. Worship the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. He has established peace on your borders. He satisfies you with the finest wheat. He sends out his command to the earth, and his word runs very swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters hoarfrost like ashes. He scatters his hail like breadcrumbs. Who can stand against his cold? He sends forth his word and melts them. He blows with his wind and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and his judgments to Israel. He has not done so to any other nation. To them he has not revealed his judgments. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. So now, Israel, give heed to the statutes and ordinances that I am teaching you to observe, so that you may live to enter and occupy the land that the Lord, your, the Lord of the God of your ancestors, is giving you. See, just as the Lord my God has charged me, I now teach you statutes and ordinances for you to observe in the land that you are about to enter and occupy. You must observe them diligently. For this will show your wisdom and discernment to the peoples who, when they hear all these statutes, will say, Surely this great nation is a wise and discerning people. For what other great nation has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is whenever we call to him? And what other great nation has statutes and ordinances as just as this entire law that I am setting before you today? But take care and watch yourselves closely so as neither to forget the things that your eyes have not have seen, nor to let them slip from your mind all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus said, Do you think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets? I have come not to abolish but to fulfill. For truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. I want to go back to that reading from Deuteronomy. And I want to go back there because I think it has something powerful to say to us uh, at this particular point in time and uh, under the circumstances that we find ourselves in. But... We're going to go back in the story a bit. 
the people of Israel were brought out of slavery, out of Egypt, and they were on their way to the Promised Land. They weren't quite there yet, although they're getting much closer by the time we find this reading. And that time um, when they were brought up out of slavery, took them out into the wilderness. It was a, a difficult time. It was a, a place of danger. It was a place of uh, concern. Uh, it was not a, a necessarily the easiest situation to, um, to be in. There were concerns about food. There were concerns about water. All of those regular creature comforts were largely missing. The people of Israel had to completely and utterly rely on God. They couldn't do it themselves. They couldn't manage on their own. They had to get water out of a rock. They had to rely on bread from heaven and quails that God sent into their midst. For 40 years, they wandered in the wilderness, and for 40 years, God provided for them. God cared for them. God protected them. God watched over them. God gave them life. For 40 years, they found God to be completely and utterly reliable and trustworthy. They were about to enter into a new situation. They were about to leave the wilderness behind and make their way into the promised land. It was a time of uncertainty. And as they went in, Moses reminded them that God was with them. That God was so near to them that they could call on God at any time. That God loved them and had cared for them for this long, all the way up to this point, and God would continue to do the same. And God also called them to share that, to tell each other that, to, to remind each other of that. This is a, a remarkably... important passage for us at this time, I think. And the reason I say that is because we are in a time of uncertainty, and difficulty, and challenge. We are in an a uncharted territory. We are facing a pandemic. We've been asked to hunker down, stay home, and stay safe. It is a time when many folks are anxious and worried and, and even fearful. And so it's a really important reminder, I think, for us to, to hear this message, to hear that God's with us, that God has, has looked after us for all these years, that God has always been trustworthy, reliable. To remember that God is close to us, and so we can call on God in prayer to provide for us, to help us, to encourage us, to, to fill us with peace and hope and life. But there is a calling in this. And the calling is for us to share, to share our faith, to, to share what we know of God, to, to share our hope. And it's not something we can obviously do in person. But there's lots of other means for us to do that. The last couple of days I've uh, made a lot of phone calls. I'm just checking in on folks and uh, um, chatting with them and that sort of thing. And I've been surprised at how well that's been received. How important it has been for just that limited contact to have. I know some of my colleagues have been using Facebook and, uh, and video chats and all sorts of other means. There are lots of ways for us to be in touch with each other and remind each other that God's close and God loves us and God protects us and God's, God will care for us unto eternity. To remind us that there's hope 
So I ask you to do that. To share your faith. To share God's presence. Pick up the phone. Start up your tablet or your computer or whatever else. Reach out to those around you. Whether they're church people or other people doesn't, doesn't really matter. Check in on folks. Just say hi. And share the, the good news that folks are not abandoned. They're not stuck. They're not without help or hope. Share the good news that, that God's with them through us at least. And in so many other ways. This is a difficult time for sure. But God is close. So close that when we call on God in prayer, God will be with us, care for us, and love us, and give us life. Thanks be to God. Now we will affirm our faith. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Love your neighbors yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us pray. Let us pray for the church. Let us pray for Todd, our bishop, for our brothers and sisters throughout the world, for our parish. Let us pray that we may all know the close presence of God with us, and that we may turn to God and receive hope and peace and courage to face the days ahead. Let us pray for the leaders of the nations. Let us pray that they will exercise wisdom and understanding. That they will seek first what is good and right for the whole human family and for the whole of creation. Let us pray for our world. Let us pray for those who are struggling with war and violence and injustice, and natural disaster and poverty. Let us pray for those who are struggling with disease and sickness. Let us pray that they may find relief from God, relief from their fellow human beings. Let us pray for this community, for the community of St. Clair Beach, Tecumseh, Windsor, and all of Essex County. Let us pray for our neighbors, that they may know peace, that they may know God's presence that they may know God's love working in their lives. Let us pray for those who are in need of our prayers, for the sick, the suffering, the lonely, the depressed, the mentally ill, and the addicted. Let us pray for all those who are on our hearts at this time. Let us pray that they may be healed helped and lifted out of all of their difficulty. Let us pray for those who have died. Let us pray for those who mourn. Let us pray that the good news of the resurrection may give them peace, comfort, and hope. And finally, let us pray for ourselves. Let us pray that we will be strengthened with God's strength that we will be filled with God's peace, that we will be confident in God's goodness and mercy and love. Let us pray all this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ gives the water of eternal life, may we always thirst for you, the spring of life and source of goodness, through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 
Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen.